Bristol University, they've axed it now from their graduation ceremonies because some students see it as, I quote, old fashioned, and I also quote, offensive to some. I find that absolutely pathetic. Uh, Paul Embry, where are you on that? Well, George Orwell said that England is the only great country whose intellectuals are ashamed of their nationality. Um, and I think, to mm. be honest, our universities are proving the point. I mean, they are, let's be blunt, they're sort of hotbeds these days of a sort of liberal progressive culture um, that kind of rouse against any small c conservative expression of, of you know, patriotism. Um, affinity for country, affection for country and stuff like that. So I think that this is, is a symbol of that mindset, of that world view. Um, and, you know, it's appalling, really, because I'm not a jingoist, by the way. I don't, I don't like the idea of kids going in like they do in America and saluting the flag and singing the national anthem every morning and stuff like that. But I think on a special occasion such as this, it's not a lot to ask to say that if the national anthem's being played, why would you want to ban it? And we seem to be the only country that does this sort of nonsense. Can you imagine in France a university banning no. Le Marseillais, a graduation ceremony? It just wouldn't happen. And I think it's shows the kind of pitiful state of our seats of learning at the moment, I'm, I'm sad to say. Daniel? It's interesting that it's Bristol again, isn't it? I mean, I actually think Bristol is going to leave the United Kingdom and just float out somewhere <laughs> into the middle of the Celtic Sea. Is that your wish? St George's Channel, and it'll be, you know, it'll be closing itself down as part of the United Kingdom altogether. Um, uh, something about Bristol, it's gone completely bonkers. <laughs> um, yeah, um, the, um, uh, the, Paul's absolutely right. I mean, but I would ask people, you know, I'd ask the University of Bristol, what about the people who find it offensive that you don't play the national anthem? Mm. What, what consideration did you give to them um, and, and to their views? I wonder which would be the majority. I do think the majority would be people that find it offensive or majority that uh, people that don't. In Bristol, you've no idea. In Bristol, you couldn't tell. But in the country at large, the majority of people do not find the national anthem offensive. It is old. The words go back and the music go back to the sort of the 18th century. Uh, we've already dropped one verse of it because it was too offensive, we thought. I don't think it's too offensive. But the one about, you know, about the, 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 the king's enemies and frustrate their politics, and frustrate it, their nation. It was a bit about crushing, crushing the Scots, which I think that, should be which, brought back which in which personally. meant to be something. I don't know whether it's, it doesn't explicitly refer to the Scots. Yeah, everyone but, knows that. That's who we were talking well, well, about. Well, you know, <laughs> whatever. We've already dropped that, that one. So, I mean, how much more of it do we have to drop? We just left with, we, we just hum. We could hum the national anthem, maybe, and they'd allow us to do that. But how about that? A humming song. Go on, then. Just give us a quick... Mm -hmm. I'm going to make him do the whole thing. I'm going to go. I'm going to go out to the toilet or somewhere and leave him humming. Let me just bring my. <laughs> let me uh, bring some of my viewers in, right? Because Jackie um, says, Michelle, uh, I think this is just a step towards people trying to remove the national anthem. Uh, and if people can't see that, we've got an even bigger problem. She says. Um, Who's this? Uh, Dell, I think it is. It's not outdated. It should be kept. There's too many people in this country trying to take away our identity. Uh, Paul says, Michelle, the national anthem is way out of date and it's not fit for purpose. Why not should perfect. we, he says, why should we be subjects and sing to save one person? It doesn't make any sense. We need a national anthem, which is about the nation and not one individual. Well, England should certainly have its own national anthem. That, that is a lacuna, the fact that the three other home countries have got national anthems and we don't in England we don't have we should have our own national anthem something like Jerusalem I'd be in favour of that but keeping God Save the King as the, the kind of default for the UK. Peter says the national anthem is offensive and outdated. He says, I get tingles listening to the Scottish, Irish and Welsh anthems. Ooh, ah. uh, he says, when they play God Save the King here, though, it makes me angry and it's time for a change, in my opinion. Brian says, well, as a Republican, I think we should have a more uplifting song, perhaps uh, Land of Hope and Glory or something, instead of something paying homage to one person. So I find that quite I mean, interesting. If you look at There's the words of, of, debate. Land of, hope, of Hope and Glory, they're probably a great <laughs> yeah. deal more offensive yeah, yeah. <laughs> to um, modern sensibilities than anything in uh, God Save the King. 
Uh, Anne, she makes a good point, uh, and she's quite right, because she says, um, Michelle, I've heard that they will play it if there's a member of the royal family visiting, uh, which is absolutely right. That is what they've said. She says, talk about flexible principles. Uh, and I do think that is quite interesting. I think you make uh, an interesting point. Uh, Maz says, Michelle, I've wanted a different anthem for years. Uh, this one should have been faded out with the empire. See, they're very divided. The national anthem is way past its sell-by date. It's outdated and utterly irrelevant, says Stuart in brackets. Another one. Another Stuart, yes. How many um, Stuarts have we got? Well, they're the Scots, you see. Well, yeah, Stuart's yeah. a Scottish rising now. up. You've, you've, really? been hacked by, you've been hacked yeah, by yeah. Scott. Have I? We were talking about the <laughs> Russians hacking the politicians last night, and I was saying, can you imagine if the Russians uh, have indeed been uh, hacking our politicians? They'd probably become so confused and bewildered by what on earth was going yeah, on. They'd probably uh, realise they've really got nothing to fear, wouldn't they? If they, yes. if they were listening to the private messages of well, other politicians. Look, John, uh, he's not a man that minces his words. He says, leave our national anthem alone, and if anyone finds it offensive, Clear off. That's what he says. There you go. I want to talk to you after the break. I've got a simple question to ask you. Uh, Christmas season coming up. Lots of family rifts and stuff like that. Uh, how forgiving are you? And don't worry, I'll also be showing you some Christmas trees and I've got an absolute corker of something that I want to show you that will definitely put a smile on your face in time for the weekend. See you in two.